Hey guys, it's Meme, and today I am bringing to you this project. Now, this is one that went to Made It Con first, and I tell you all the time, I bring you projects after students had paid for the classes get to take it, and they took it in, at Made It Con in July, and so I'm bringing it to you now in a totally different form, but I want to show you how this works. Let me flip through real quick and show you because I think it's adorable. We're going to make an album that works like this with very little effort. And my favorite thing is I get to dig into this paper pack that's been sitting here staring at me for the longest time. I cannot wait, so let's dig in. Now this album's super easy to make, but the first thing I do anytime I use a paper pack is I go through and pull out all of my cut aparts. That's the first thing I wanna do. So I'm gonna run through, this paper is so stinking adorable. I wanna run through and get out all of the cut aparts and I'll move my stickers to the side because I won't need those. Oh, we only have the two sheets, that's all right. And I'm gonna move these stickers to the, to the side. Now, the next thing I want to do is I wanna decide what paper I want my album to actually be. And let me show you. Can you see here this pink paper? That is my cover, okay? And you can see here this arrow, that is the back. That'll just kind of work out. But I wanna make sure if there's a certain page I want to be my cover page, I don't want to uh, miss it. This is adorable. And I feel like I want that to be my cover for definite. And then after that, I don't really care what lands. So here's what you'll need. You'll need two pieces of paper, two that you want to match. And since I use that tree, I'm tempted to use that one. What's on the other side of this plaid? A solid, that's a good idea. Let's use this plaid. I'm not calling the plaid a solid. I know y'all think I would, I'm not. This and also this. There's. It's not a solid, but it works as a solid for me. All right, get ready for the easiest album. So what I'm doing first is taking this 12 by 12 paper and I'm cutting it down into six inch strips. So what we'll have is a six by 12 inch piece of cardstock. And I've stacked these on top of each other so I'm getting them lined up really well. And then I'm gonna cut these at six inches. Now let me show you, remember I talked to you before about generous cardstock, see that little bit of the paper there? So if you just cut this away at the white edge, you'll have a little bit extra. But I measured where I got two six by 12 inch pieces. So that's where we're gonna start. Now we need to do a tiny bit of measuring, but not bad. So let me show you what I've done here. I've taken all of the tags out of this album so you can just see the album itself and how it's laid out. In this particular album, I did not care how I laid my paper out. So you may have paper you're using that doesn't matter either, and let me show you why. These pages are just patterns and they don't really have images that matter to me how they lay out. So I did not um, pay attention to that on this album. I just cut the pages. But for this album, I wanna pay attention. And let me show you what I mean. I want my trees to be the cover of this album, okay? And the way this album lays out, that means if I cut the cover here, the inside of this page will lay here. That means I wanna make sure I cut on this side of the page. So that means I'm gonna lay it to the left-hand side of my work surface so I know I'm gonna cut this one on this side of the page. Now the next page, when I flip this over, will become one that's cut on this side of the page. You see how one's cut to one side, one's cut to the other? This is the page I'm picking now. So I'm gonna let it be this one. This is perfectly fine with me. But that means I'm gonna put it over here. That tells me I'm gonna measure two inches up on this side of this page, but I'm gonna measure two inches up on this side of this page. You don't have to do this much thinking. I just wanted to make sure that I was getting these to lay out like I wanted them to. For this one, I want the trees to show on this page. So I'm gonna lay this one over here because I need it to be cut to this side, okay? And then on this one, I think I'll let the plaid be the one that gets cut to this side. So we'll see the plaid in here. And that means we'll finish with that um, leafy side. Okay, so all that said, again, it does not matter as much as you think unless you're wanting to be picky about where your paper lives, okay? So what I need to do now is with these pieces I put over here, I need to measure up two inches on the side and make a mark. So I'm gonna get my pencil, which you might not be able to see this, but I will. So one, two, three, four little squares is gonna give me two inches and I wanna make a mark. Ironically, it's right on that little branch there, so I'll make sure I can see it. So there's a two inch mark up, and then I wanna do the same on this one, two inches up. I know that was a lot of explanation, and again, I did not do that in the class that we did. In the class, we did not pay attention to orientation, and it worked out just fine. So you wouldn't necessarily have to pay attention either, but I want to for this album. All right, and then these guys, remember we laid them to this side, I need to measure them 
on this side, two inches up. One, two, three, four. And then again on this guy, two inches up. One, two, three, four. And now we can score and slice. Now in my scoreboard, what I wanna do is I wanna score these pieces at six inches. That's half. So I'm just gonna score this right down the middle, okay? And I wanna do that to all the pieces, but I wanna remember wh where my little marks are. I wanna keep them kind of separate so I can keep my marks correct. All right, so there is those two. And now we'll do these. We're gonna score them also at six inches. The assembly of this album is really easy, I promise. It may seem complicated the way I started it, but it's not hard. All right, so I've got those done, and now I need to start slicing. So in our trimmer, we're gonna pay attention to our two inch mark, which is here, and our center and our score mark, which is here, okay? So you can kind of see my score mark right there. I'm using a, a brown paper, so it's kind of hard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up my score mark at my cut line and my two inch pencil mark at my cut line and slice. And let me show you, let me do this. I wanna sink this blade and I wanna go up and down so I get a good cut. So this piece do not get rid of. We will be using this piece. So put this aside, those are gonna come in handy. So this is what I'm looking for, okay? So this one is gonna be, the, is gonna be one of the pages inside our book. Now what I wanna do is I wanna do the same thing to this guy. Remembering how, you know, I marked it here, my score line is there. So I'll put my score line here. If you can't see your score line, something you can do, because on these pattern papers it can be hard, just go ahead and fold it and crease it, and this will help you to be able to see it when you lay it in. And if that doesn't help, you can always put a pencil mark there. All right, so let's go back to our trimmer. Let's lay this guy in. There's my fold. There's my pencil. Let's get it in there correctly. And slice. So this album kind of comes from the brag book album. If you remember how I did those brag books, it's very much like that. Now for video purposes, I'm gonna be doing this opposite here so you'll know that I'm doing two different pages, okay? So now I'm gonna line my score line up here and my little pencil mark. I'm gonna sink my blade and slice. So this page will go in this direction, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same with this next one. Remember, don't get rid of these. We use these in the album. They're super cute too. All right, and then this one, slice over here. So what you should have now is two cut in this orientation and two cut in the opposite orientation. Now you'll see where all that matters. So you remember that I want the cover of my album to be the trees, right? So I'm gonna fold this in half and use my bone folder and crease it. And that will be the cover of my album, okay? Then the second page, was going to be this guy, all right? So this one, I'm gonna fold this way and crease it, just like so. And these two can then get glued together. And let me show you how that happens. So this page and this page will get glued together on um, three sides, here, here, and here, and we create a pocket. So let me do that real quick. So I'm gonna add glue to three sides this short side, this long side, and then up the spine of the book. Now, don't worry too much about being like perfect with your glue placement, like right to the edge. We're making a really big pocket here, so you don't have to be right to the edge with that. You can have, you can come in just a little bit. Now you're just gonna lay these on top of each other, and this is gonna create your pocket and your first couple of pages. So now I always have glue that squeaks out the side and that's okay. That will help your spine to be even that much sturdier. You wanna make sure you don't glue your book closed though. So I'm gonna open this up like so. Just make sure that's down. So we have now glued our cover, our first page, which is a pocket also, and then our second page or third page. Now what we do is we choose our next piece. And I wanted this tree to be this page. I think this tree is so cute, and I think with the gnomes, it'll be adorable. So here's what I'm gonna do for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and fold it in half, and I'm gonna crease this with my bone folder. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this side to this side because I want the trees out, okay? And the way we're gonna do it, three sides. We're gonna glue down this side. I got a bubble there. We're gonna glue down this side 
across the bottom and up the spine. Again, we're making a really big pocket here, right here. So don't worry too much about your glue being right to the edge. You can go in a little bit because this pocket's gonna be really large. You'll have plenty of room in there to put tags and things. Then you just wanna squish this down. Again, I like to rub that extra glue along the spine and just make sure I clean up any that's hanging out the edges and make sure I don't glue any pages shut. So go ahead and give it a good open. All right, we've got one more page to attach. And this one, I'm gonna have the plaid out. Isn't that cute? Because remember I told you the back would be just the, the fall leaves. Now again, I really paid attention to the layout on this one. In my first one, I did not pay attention. I just went with it. So if you're not worried about the layout, just cut paper and put it together and it'll be super cute no matter what. Now for this one, we're gonna do the same thing. I'll put the glue on this side so you can see it. We're gonna glue up the spine, down the base, and up the free edge there, and then put these two together. That's all there is to it. It's a fun little album. You could continue too. I just did mine with two sheets of cardstock. I thought it would be cool to just use two sheets um, to make this happen. But you could keep going. You could keep gluing on to this guy. All right, just make sure everything opens. And now that I'm here, I wanna make sure that my little pockets will open and those will. And let's make sure this one opens. It should open fine, it does. And this one opens just fine. Okay, so that is the beginning of our little album. Again, you could keep going. So remember these little guys we cut off? Let me show you how I like to use those. So I'm gonna open the first page and let me show you. So right here with these little angles, you can make pockets by just gluing them down on two sides here and at the bottom, and it makes little angled pockets. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take this little guy and I'm gonna glue him there in that corner, just on two sides. So here and here. And again, with the glue, you don't have to try to get right to the very edge with this because we're just making a like a slider pocket. So it won't be the end of the world if you close it up a little bit. You know what I mean by that. If you've made albums before, you try really hard to get that, to save as much space as you can. But these are just little slide-in pockets and you really don't have to stress about that. The one thing you do have to worry about here is if you have any hangover. So let me show you this up close. Can you see I've got that tiny little point that's hanging over the edge? It's tiny, but it will cause you a little issue in the closing. So I just snip it off, glue that down, and make sure that it freely opens and closes, and we're good. So now let's go to the next page. Now here I can do anything I want. Let's see what I wanna do here. Do I wanna do plaid here? That would be really cute right there. And you don't have to put these everywhere, by the way. You can save them and use them in other places. I'm gonna put this little plaid one down right here. I think it'll be cute. Two sides and glue this down. Just like that. And then I'll flip the page and keep going. Now here I wanna use this plaid and look how cute it is to bring the plaid over here too. So I'm gonna to glue this side down. I got a tiny bit of glue there. I'm gonna wipe it off so it doesn't glue the pocket shut. Glue this to this corner. So see how you're literally using two full sheets of paper to do this? Two full sheets, we're not wasting any of it. And then this little guy, he's gonna go right here. So let's run back through our album and see what we've got. We've got our front page. We've got our first pocket page and slider pocket, our second page layout with a slider pocket and big pocket at the top. Then we've got another page with a slider pocket, another pocket, another pocket, and the back of our album. So now let me show you something else I'm gonna do. Inside here, these pockets can be a little difficult to open because they're so tight the way I created them. I'm gonna take a circle punch and do a half circle punch in them. So just real quick, I'm just gonna run this guy down and I'm gonna eyeball halfway because y'all know how I am, right? I'm gonna halfway into the punch, eyeball halfway between here and punch that out. And that will give me a finger mark once I put things inside to be able to pull anything out that might get kind of low down in there. And another place I wanna do it is this middle pocket. So this is the center of our album, but it's so tight because of the way we did it, I wanna make sure I do a half punch there as well. Now, this is not necessary. If you don't have a circle punch, don't stress about it. It's just something I like to do, especially on this big pocket because things can get lost down in there. And then I've got one more angle pocket here I wanna do. These guys are more for just the continuity, just so that they all match. But honestly, that big pocket at the top, it really does need it because things, like I said, this is a big pocket and things can get tucked in. All right, 
we're ready to start decorating. Wasn't that easy to assemble? I mean, there was some thinking in this one, but pretty easy to do. So as always, I wanna work on my cover first. And why is that? Because I don't wanna use something on the inside that I might've really wanted for the outside. I wanna use everything for here. Now this would be a super cute Thanksgiving album, wouldn't it? Like to have this little guy right here on the front there, but I don't know. I think I'm gonna lean toward the fall looking and just kind of do fall. I love fall most of all is cute, be thankful. These little guys are cute too. Let's also look at the sticker sheet. There could be something here you really want to use on your cover. Hmm, these are really cute, these little tags. The gnomes are adorable. Fall is in the air, this is really cute right here. This is what happens. I spend all this time looking for what I want. All right, let me look and we'll get back together. So I've decided to kind of make this look like a little outdoor scene. And in my scrap bin, I found this piece of green solid cardstock and I've cut it down to be six by one and a half. And I'm gonna glue this to the bottom. I think that'll kind of make it look like um, the forest floor kind of. So I'm just gonna glue this directly down and then I'm gonna start to build this cover. And again, I'm just gonna kind of treat it like a little forest scene. I think that'll be cute. So I'm gonna glue that down to one side. Get that stuck down really well. Something I'm noticing about this photo play paper I wanna point out to you guys, be very sparse with your glue. It warps very easily if you get too much glue, so be careful with that. Um, it sometimes will flatten out as it dries, but I'm getting a little bit of warpage and I'm being a little heavy handed, so I need to dial that back. All right, the other thing I wanna do, on the bottom of the sticker sheet, there is this sticker and I think this is so cute. So I'm gonna lay it on the edge, kinda of like it's a pile of leaves there. I know it's not a pile of leaves, I wish my leaves were scalloped and plaid at the same time. I think that would be adorable. But that gets a little color down there, right? That's cute. And then I can save this for somewhere else in the album. So I'd put that back. And now I wanna build my scene around some of the gnomes. I love this one, this sticker that says, well, hello fall. I wanna go ahead and put it up here so I don't, um, I don't forget to do it. I think this is so cute, just like that. Well, hello fall, how cute is that, right? And then our little gnome folks. I might go a little crazy with the gnomes on the cover, but these are so cute. So I'm gonna put one little guy here standing on the grass because he's too cute right there, right? And then I've got two more. I think I'm gonna put this little guy right over here. I'm not gonna stick him down just yet because I wanna make sure I've got room for this little girl. She's so cute to stick her right here. Maybe I don't want three on here. He is really cute on there like that. Maybe I want him just to be next to the other guy right there, and then maybe bring her over here. There we go. Are you gonna cover up fall? You do a little bit. So let's see if we can get you where you don't. You kinda do, you kinda don't. Let's tuck you down a little bit more. I'll stand you on the leaves. Yes, I talk to them. <laughs> so there's a little, a little gnome family on the front, and I love this little pumpkin cart. I think it's cute, and it looks kinda like they've been like pumpkin picking. So I'm gonna put this little guy down as well. Put that one there. Stickers make things so easy. There's a couple of pumpkins and I'm thinking I might put one of those somewhere. Let's see. So I decided against the pumpkins, but I did decide I want to use this little guy. There's a little sticker in there. Had to get that one out. This is so adorable. I'm gonna stick it from one edge to the other just to look like somebody tied a leaf bunting in the trees. How cute is this little album and so easy. Oh, here's a mushroom. Let's see what it can do. We wanna put a mushroom down here, or maybe here next to her, or next to him, or over here. I can't decide. I don't know, maybe I should've put it behind. Let's see if I can pick that up. So I'm just gonna lift this a little bit, if I can. Yes, and let's see if we can get this little mushroom kinda of behind there. I think that'll be so cute. Just to kinda of layer that up. Oh, it's so cute. I may even wanna add something else down here. Let me look at the words. This little sticker is super cute, and I think it'd be cute right down here, just as a little added interest for the eye, to give the eye a place to go. Isn't that cute? I love it. I'm gonna stop there. I've done a lot on the cover, but that's what I wanted to look like, a little gnome family out in the woods, right? Isn't that cute? I love it. All right, let's go to this page. So right here, I'm gonna add this piece to give me kind of a landing spot to build a little scene on. And, oh, it's perfect. I don't even have to trim it. It went perfect. I might trim it just to give the angle that the same, that the little slice has that we made. That is perfect. Okay, now what I'm thinking is this little turkey guy, 
Look, looks so cute right here. I'm gonna put him down there. And then this little thing says Turkey Day. Wouldn't this be cute if I use this spot for a Thanksgiving Day picture or something like that? Because it's during the fall. Come on, this is so cute and so easy. All right, I'm gonna flip over here and let's do something on the plaid. So how about this beautiful sunflower? But I wanna put some leaves behind it as well. So there's one leaf, let's stick that one there. Let's put another leaf, mm, maybe at the bottom. Somewhere like that. Oops, I don't want it to hang off. There we go. And then one more leaf. Got this little brown one, and I'll stick it right there. Y'all didn't get to see hardly any of that because I had that sticker held up. But look how cute that is just to put that little flower there. And yes, you can decorate here, but I'm going to wait. I'll show you why I'm going to wait for that. Let's do our next little slice. I think these little gnomes are the cutest things. And to save some stickers, because I might want to use them later or I might want to make a second album, I'm going to do a little fussy cutting right here. And I want to show you something else I'm going to do with him. You know how the stickers have the little white edge so that they pop off the page really well? I'm going to bubble cut him so he'll pop off the page well too. So what that means is I'm not going to cut directly to his image or the image of the pumpkins and the little gnome, I'm actually gonna cut around it to leave me some of the yellow because that way when I put him down on the plaid, I'll have a little bit of color to separate the plaid to him. If you don't do that, what happens is they'll kind of disappear into the background, your little images will, and you don't want that to happen. So see what we ended up with here? Because we have that little yellow around him, he's really gonna pop. Let's see what else we wanna put on there. So I'm gonna glue him directly down. He's on the inside of the album and I don't really have to have any dimension here. I can just let him be nice and flat to the page. So I'm gonna glue him directly down just like so. And then I found this sticker that says fall, sweet fall. I think that'll be cute right here. So simple guys, so simple. All right, and then we have one more here to do. Here I wanna put this little couple, do you see them? This one here. Actually, let me let me check something. I think it might be cute if they're standing on this or if I put this across them. No, I want them standing on Wobble and Gobble. Maybe that's their names, Wobble and Gobble. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this little guy like this on top of Wobble. And don't worry that he's sticking off. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do in a second to fix that. And then Gobble can go right here. I don't know if there's, that's their names, but it's cute, right? So let me show you how to fix his little sticky hat. This is what I do. This is my embossing powder tool. And I just tap it on the back so that the powder sticks to the stamp. And then the stamp won't stick, I mean the sticker, and then the sticker won't stick to my page. See how he's not sticking down now? You can do that with anything, baking soda, cornstarch, cosmetic powder, any powder that will stick to the back of your sticker to keep it from being sticky anymore, that's all you're looking for. Oh my goodness, how cute. Okay, let's do part, what is this, part four or five? I don't know, let's do the next part. Now what I'm gonna do is cut apart all my cut aparts. What's cool about these paper packs is you can use a whole sheet of these cut aparts in one album and still have a whole sheet for another album. You will easily get two albums out of this and I would venture, I guess, you could get three. And the reason I think you could get three is because you could take these two pages and combine them enough to get enough cut aparts for both out for three albums. I bet you could anyway. So what I'm going to do here is just cut all of these guys apart. Now really quick, I'm going to run through and with my large angle on my angle punch, I'm going to make these look like tags. So I'm just going to come through and do little angles like that. Anytime you have something like this where you can do this, it's super cute. Now they don't just look like little cut aparts, they look like little tags. And I think they're super, super cute in your album. On the big guys, I just did the tabs on the corners here because I'm gonna load them into the album like this and that still looks like a tag to me. So these are perfect for photos, aren't they? You could put two pretty good size photos on those. And these are great for photos if you print them to the size you want them to be, or they're also great to use for journaling spots. You can cut a little piece of paper and stick back here and write on them and do some journaling. All right, let me show you how to make them look even more like tags. So you know how we cut these pieces off earlier from our paper? These little pattern pieces right here are perfect for this. What I do is I just take my scissors and I cut this away like so. And there's one, and I'm even gonna use this side. And I know it's not perfect because it actually has a little writing on it, but it will work for what I'm wanting to do. So I've got two out of one strip, and I'm gonna need enough for each one of these, so let me count. So now you can see I have a bunch of little strips cut, and what I'm gonna do is just fold them in half with the pattern facing out, 
and then I'm gonna add glue to the inside. So a strip of glue here and a little bit on the front. And this is gonna be my pull tab for my tags. So all you do is put that down where you want it, get it centered as good as you can. I'm just eyeballing it and just glue that into place flat just like that and that becomes a little pull tab for your tag you can make them longer shorter you can poke holes in them you can do anything you want to with them but i think it is a cute idea to be able to get your little pull tabs without using any product really these are just a little strips that come with um that come with our paper anyway right now this one i am going to make it a little long because i'm going to dodge covering up the words so and that's fine it does not matter you just want to be able to pull your little tabs to get your tags out of their pockets. So there's that one. So I'm gonna run through and do all of them. This always reminds me of a funny story. I'm gonna tell you why I'm doing this. So when the kids were little, we bought a little pull toy for Josh. It was a pull behind Elmo. So that tells you how little they were. And it talked and we were in the living room on Christmas Eve, getting ready for Christmas, wrapping gifts. And that little puppy talked <laughs> and he says, Elmo loves puppy. It was Elmo that talked, I guess. He said, Elmo loves puppy. And when he said that, Vince looked at me and he went, Happy Thanksgiving. And I said, what? He said, this stuffed animal says Happy Thanksgiving. I said, no, babe. It says Elmo loves puppy. How he ever got Happy Thanksgiving out of Elmo loves puppy, I do not know. But that's been our, our thing ever since. He just kind of looked at me with the strangest look on his face. Like, why would you buy him a toy that says Happy Thanksgiving? I didn't, babe. <laughs> I have to give credit where credit is due for these little tabs. I learned this from Brenda. Brenda uses these in her albums a lot, and I think it's very smart making these little tabs with the paper. So kudos to her for teaching me that. So I'm gonna open it up to page one, and this guy will be cute here, tucked in there like that. And then I think I'll open this up and put one of these in here. And see how they do? They just kind of lay over your solid pages in the back. This album fills up really quick and looks super cute and then i'm going to flip here and oh this will be cute on this page i'm thankful for so stick that one in and see what i meant by you don't really have to worry about the glue too much these are just catcher pockets they just catch things and hold them still how about that sunflower there and another pocket here definitely gobble gobble right and then we have another pocket here and let's put this guy in there too and then our big pockets um, well, our big pocket. We have one big and we have this one right here. So what I'm gonna do is take this guy and place it in here. And it does not matter that it sticks out over your album. That's fine. It will be cute like that. And then we're gonna open this one up here and stick this one inside. Now there's plenty of room for more tags and pictures and things like that. But as you know with me, what I always like to do is build the album and get it ready for the photos. And then when I put the photos in, I like to have some of my stickers left or some of my cut aparts left to be able to finish decorating it. Isn't it the cutest thing and so easy? I love it. These are the ones I did in my class for Made It Con. Now I took all the tags out of this one because I was showing you what it looked like without the tags. But here's the other one with the tags in it. And you just can go to town. These are all stickers. You can go to town and make these in so many different styles using paper packs two pieces of cardstock from your paper pack and then ephemera and do them up. They're the same size, look how different they look. Isn't that interesting how the color does? So, so there you go guys, you know the deal, I wanna see them. You're gonna start making them and my favorite thing to do is to see what you do with them. So please head to our customer gallery and share with me what you make using this style or any style mini album. I'm, I'm not picky, I like all your inspiration. Head over to maymaymadeit.com to our customer gallery and upload a photo. And if you're looking for inspiration, there is more than 2,000 projects posted over there. So go check it out if you need some inspiration for our stamp sets or our products that we carry or have shown you. And don't forget to like this video. I can't tell you how much that helps on YouTube. You just doing that simple little thumbs up, clicking that thumbs up if you like it. It shares it with other people and lets them see the video. And most importantly, become one of our crafty family members. We call ourselves the Made It. Become a Made It and click that subscribe button. It's free. You just click the button. Thanks so much for being here today, guys. Until next time, bye-bye.